FMC and TFM in five minutes or less, go. In regular phased array, by changing the timing that we fire the elements, we can electronically focus the beam. This gives us the ability to drastically increase the resolution at the focal plane. Using more elements means a higher aperture and more focusing ability, but this comes at a cost. We saw that in the 1632-64 element video I did, link in the description. It may be really in focus at one spot, but a little out of focus as we move away from the focal plane. But if we used a whole bunch of different sound paths and we tried to hit that reflector from all sorts of different angles and we combined all that data, then we could potentially map the response over an area and in theory be focused everywhere. Enter FMC and TFM. FMC is full matrix capture. This is a way to use each element individually as both a transmitter and a receiver. With regular phased array, we might be firing 16 or 32 elements at once, but not with FMC. With FMC, we fire and listen on every combination of element pairs. The benefit is we get thousands of possible sound paths to interrogate the region from every direction. The F in FMC stands for full. So no big surprise, when you're done, the matrix is full. There's an A scan for every possible pair of transmitter and receiver. A few things about FMC, number one, it is a ton of data. With a 32 element transducer, you've got 32 squared or 1,024 A scans. Compare that to regular phased array, say 40 to 70 at a one degree increment, you have 31 A scans. You can store FMC data raw and process it later, but from a data storage standpoint, it's not really practical. And FMC data by itself is not an image. It's just a pile of A scans. To make an image, we do TFM. TFM is the total focusing method. This is the math that we use to make a picture. The word total implies it can't get any better than this. Now that's a bit of a stretch because we're still bound by the laws of physics, but in a mathematical sense, we'll go with it. To set up TFM, we define a region of interest and a grid size. Then for each point, it looks at the data from each and every A scan. Based on the sound path to each one of the points, it does a delay and sum math, basically adding up the contributions from every A scan for each point in the grid. This is sort of like triangulation on steroids. But A scan data is just amplitude versus time and different wave modes travel at different velocities, so you have to tell the TFM algorithm what wave mode you're using. If you take a bare transducer and put it on a block, it may just be longitudinal wave down, longitudinal wave back up. If you're doing shear wave weld inspection, you may get into transverse wave modes, longitudinal wave modes, and combinations. This is where all that 2T, 3T, 4T, TTL, all that jargon, that's where it comes from. Remember, when you fire the probe, you can't tell it to fire those propagation modes. It just does what it wants to do. All we're doing in the back end is sort of reverse engineering the A scans based on the time of flight. Let's take a look at some of the common ones. TT is transverse, transverse, so that's just shear waves. It's first leg inspection, kind of the top half of your S scan. 3T is, well, we can't really see that on the S scan, but it's down to the bottom, up to the reflector, back to the probe, or the reverse order. 4T is a second leg inspection, so it's kind of the bottom of the S scan. And 5T, it's kind of hard to draw. Is TFM better than regular phased array? It all depends on what you're doing. It is another tool in the toolbox. It's definitely slower than regular phased array because you got all those A scans, but when each TFM frame is calculated, we just throw that FMC data aside. However, with TFM, you're stuck with whatever image you generated based on the propagation mode you selected, unless you saved the FMC data, which you probably didn't because it's way too big. The propagation modes that you select will depend on what you're looking for and where you're looking. Some modes will have good responses and some modes will not show anything at all. There's way more things to talk about that I'm just not going to get to in a five minute video. Things like amplitude, fidelity, comparing responses from different wave modes, aperture size, etc. This is meant to be just a brief primer on FMC TFM. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.